fight commentary breakdowns. And I've got a special guest. Look who it is. It's Kung Lee. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Kung Lee, welcome. What's up, everyone? Thanks for having me on your show. And you're tuning in from San Jose, right? Actually, yeah, I'm in uh, the Elk Grove, Sacramento area okay. now. Okay, cool. So, what are you doing? I know you're doing television, you're doing movies, you're training. Um, is that kind of your life right now? Yeah, yeah, hanging out with the kids, uh, being at home with the family before this crazy project get, uh, gets going. It's called The Target. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been just like a... You know, producing it and then uh, putting the team together from, uh, you know, a couple guys from the Into the Badlands and uh, just working with uh, as many talented people as possible. Okay, I see. When is the expected release date potentially of the target? Well, you know, it's it's been uh, pushed uh, forward a little bit. You know, we, uh, you know, we're working out some details with the uh, with the co-star. Mm -hmm. So as um, soon as we finalize that deal then we can start filming. We, we've been ready to go. Just, uh, you know, we had a little, um, you know, um, negotiation uh, issues. So, you know. Of course, with any kind of movie, right? It's like there's always that drama. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's just get to the beginning. Um, your fight journey, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, I've seen interviews in the past where I believe you, you've talked to other reporters and um, as a kid, maybe you were bullied, and then your parents sent you to to take kung fu lessons. Is that what happened? Actually, yeah. I mean, w w you know, uh, leaving Vietnam uh, like a week before the fall of Saigon, uh, then living in two different refugee camps, uh, wow. one in the Philippines and one in Guam, then getting a sponsor in Monterey. Then by the time I was ten, uh, my mom, uh, I was getting bullied and picked on him. My mom uh, ended up uh, putting me in some uh, Taekwondo, mm -hmm. and then from Taekwondo did uh, some uh, Vietnamese Kung Fu, and then uh, found my way in wrestling, and wrestling led to going back to martial arts, and found the, you know, the Sanda, uh, Chinese style type of uh, kickboxing, mm -hmm. then worked my way into MMA, and, and basically the rest is history. Exactly. Yeah. And when you decided to go from training to competing, was that a long process, or did you one day just wake up and say, let's do it? You know, uh, since I've been uh, wrestling and uh, competing um, in so many years of wrestling, uh, I just want to compete. I, I, I love the contact. And even um, when I first started, I, I was just already getting disqualified. So I figure uh, maybe Taekwondo tournaments, uh, you know, um, with excessive force, you can't draw blood to the face. So I, I figure I need something more hardcore. So I, uh, one day um, there was a, like a flyer. And uh, it was uh, for the U.S. Opens. It was uh, the U.S. Sancho uh, Opens, and it was in Alabama. And uh, uh, it was hosted by uh, this uh, kung fu teacher named uh, Sean Liu. And then um, I went over there and fought in two divisions, won both divisions, broke my foot, broke my hand. Wow. And came home and said, ah, oh, I found my sport. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So you're a true warrior, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's definitely been a fun ride. I, I feel very blessed to uh, you know, um, to have the chance to compete, you know, from the the tournament style, paying for your own way, all the way up till you know, like the main event uh, for UFC. Exactly. So I, I, I've been blessed, and you know, I was jumping back and forth probably wasn't the smartest thing to do from the entertainment, doing movies, and going back to MMA. Um, you know, a, a lot of people are right about if I would have stuck with MMA because I was undefeated when I was uh, just focused on training. But mm -hmm. you know, I can't fight forever. I started MMA late, and you know, I figure I, I needed some kind of, you know, um, backup plan. Exactly. So I, I started on the backup plan, and you know, um, the, just trying to be smart about my career. And whenever an opportunity come up. Uh, like working on uh, with Wong Kar Wai or Wu Ping, uh, Donnie Yin. So I had to take and jump at the opportunity and, you know, vacate my belt. And, you know, I, it, it, I just had to do it just because I knew that this opportunity wouldn't come around. Uh, you know, once they start uh, production and then uh, first day of filming, if you're not there, then you're not going to get back on. So Exactly. And I've seen you in some of those Chinese movies. I've seen you in The Grandmaster I've seen you in Bodyguards and Assassins. So out of all those collaborations you did with Chinese filmmakers, which movie was, was the most memorable? Which movie had a really memorable story? 
Uh, sorry, my dogs are. Oh, it's all good. Um, uh, I mean, they're they were all, you know, the first time I saw Master Wu Ping, you know, it was like, holy crap, that's the master. Mm -hmm. and, then, like, and, and then, um, uh, Jen working with Donnie Yen and to Wong Kar Wai, uh, it was just cra crazy experience that I got a chance to uh, be able to work on um, all these uh, with all the with all the you know great directors and 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 producers so mm. you know, it's uh it was it was just an awesome experience i can't you know say one was better than the other I, they all had different experiences you know um mm -hmm. i think with mass whooping like um i i took a few meetings i and i said i'm i'm gonna go meet him and they're like oh he doesn't speak english or anything and he's very serious and I got on set and he was speaking English to me, oh, wow. throwing throwing papers at my head and making fun of my costumes. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that that was fun. And then uh, then uh, I got a chance to jump on set with you know Donnie Yen and you know we got a chance to collaborate, talk a lot about how to fit MMA into uh, you know the the kung fu type of movies. Mm -hmm. And then, you know uh, then Wong Kar Wai was just uh, just an experience where when I got a chance to uh, interview. He had his, I guess, uh, um, his AD, who spoke really good English, and one car white just sitting there with his shades. <laughs> yes. Looking the other way, and then um, um, uh, basically, uh, you know, after uh, a long conversation about where I kind of like this interviewing me, and then uh, um, one car white turned around and says, uh, "Okay, I'm gonna add more scenes for you," and. And then uh, do a bunch of stuff, which uh, you know we ended up filming the middle part of Grandmaster, and they want me to come back and uh, where the, you know like the, the first time we fought was in the rain and exactly broke my leg and and then uh, basically that was the first time I ever lost in a fight. So then the second time I came back and then uh, I got beat again and then um, then 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 the third time um, we came back and it was supposed to be uh, just with my son, but we never got a chance to to do that so mm. we ended up um uh basically just going uh, uh his son got sick and and um and we and i and, and i and i couldn't uh, finish my scene so you know it's uh uh unfortunate but i was filming two movies at once and i couldn't get released because i was filming lucy lou and they uh -huh. wanted me to come back on set and finish my scene with uh you know um to bring back my kid and have uh, have him train have uh, you know uh, Tony Rung's character the uh, Ip Man train my my, my son but mm -hmm. it's just uh, we we had the the walk with my son everything we just didn't record the dialogue so oh. it's it an opportunity that was lost but you know I got a chance to work with Wong Kar Wai three exactly. times so, exactly yeah. wow yeah. and another movie I've seen you in is Pandorum and yeah. how did you get hooked up with that. Actually, you know, that was like my first like real audition where they're like, I'm like, you want to see some kicks? They're like, no, we don't need to see some, any kicks. You want to see flips? Like, nope. We just, all we need to see if you you can deliver this dialogue. And, you know, I was prepared for the, the dialogue. I, I had a couple of weeks because they, they, they went on a, like a, like a worldwide, a worldwide search for like, uh, like a physical type of, uh, an Asian. And the, it was written for a Japanese, um, character but oh. they, they couldn't find it so they opened it up to all asian nationalities right so um basically i delivered i said you know i, I don't speak japanese but i can speak vietnamese and they're like all right try it out so they sent me the lines like two weeks in advance uh, this is like the longest i ever got it because i'm not really a good of a cold reader I, like i need to be like know my lines and be in the moment right mm -hmm. so um um basically when when I got there, I already knew all my lines, and um, it was just like a room by myself. And uh, the director, Christian Albert, was uh, he was on a, like a Skype call, and then uh, basically um, the producer was in the room, and the producer was the one reading, reading you know, like the back and forth line, the, the, all the Ben Foster's uh, line, and and for me to deliver my lines, and I just uh, I just crushed it, and and then uh, as I drove off the you know, the, their lot um, uh, within probably 45 minutes. Of course, you know, it's L.A., right? So it's sitting in traffic. And then, yep. uh, my, my agent, Brett Norensberg, calls me up and says, hey, uh, you ready to go to Germany? I'm like, huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, 
awesome. So that was uh, that was kind of how that went down. And then, uh, you know, uh, I guess, uh, again, like the rest is history, you know. And, yeah, be, you know, it's, it's like I went into the Hollywood world. And I'm like, wow, this is easy. I was getting my first project I auditioned for a Channing Tatum fight crush it right and then second one was like Tekken uh, no problem then third one uh, was uh, Pandorum so I got like my first three back to back to back and then then I'll set up, then I went on like uh, um, uh, two legends with uh, Master Wu Ping and then uh, then I then I started I, I to get back to uh, to you know fighting yeah so I, I got back and I didn't do good and then, then I got my revenge and then um uh that was the fight with Scott Smith, and then then I got my revenge, and then all of a sudden, three movies back to back to back uh, popped up again. That was uh, then uh, Grandmaster came on, and then I had um, um, uh, I I was in uh, Grandmaster and um, uh, uh, the man with the iron fit. Well, sorry, uh, sorry, um, it was uh, Dragon Eyes, then Grandmaster, and then at the same time, the man with the iron fist. Mm-hmm. I was like. I was uh, I went from Dragon Eyes, with and then I had like maybe a week or two at home, and I was, you know, off to China. And wow. Went on uh, the set of um, the Man with the Iron Fist, shot for four days, then flew back to, um, well, flew to another place in in China, and then uh, then uh, did some work for uh, um, the what do you call it? Uh, then Grandmasters. Then went back on the set of the Man with the Iron Fist, then shot for a couple of days and flew back and did a, a two two and a half week long uh that scene in the rain then uh then i flew back and i, I stayed on set because his son got sick so um after a month i was getting ready to uh, film with lucy lou and then the uh, production calls me and says hey uh, we need you uh, on set all we need is like two days and we are like right in the middle of filming and shooting lucy lou out so mm-hmm. she could get out mm-hmm. i was like i was stuck and uh I couldn't do it, and they 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 wrap set, they wrap location, and then um, if you watch closely at the end of the movie on Grandmaster, you see my character throwing a sidekick, and that was like kind of like um, you know like like a, like a rehearsal set, but you know the, that fight scene in the middle was pretty cool. Not it was the rain scene, but mm-hmm. it was like an indoor where you know where I I fought and like I threw a kick and it hit the wall, and then he moved out of the way, and then um, you know a one car wise very um, detailed. So when I hit the wall. It cuts to a, uh, like a backboard, and the bolts popped out. You know, it's kind of cool, but never, n- never made it just because you know what, what happened. But mm-hmm. uh, at least I got the experience to work with him. So exactly, and yeah. um, you know, you mentioned that first fight with Scott Smith. If, I remember when I first watched it, it seemed like you were dominating that first fight for a while until the end, right? You you just tripped. Like it seemed like it it didn't. It looked like you almost won that that first fight with Scott Smith too. Uh, you know, um, uh, the first round, like when I was throwing those spinning back kicks, and remember, I, um, Scott Coker ended up saying, "Hey, let's meet at Fu, right?" And this, I, I just been doing uh, three movies back to back to back, and mm-hmm. uh, I said, "Sure, um, let's have some fun." And then I, I had a feeling that he was going to ask me to fight, so me and my wife met him at Fu, and we were eating, and he's all, "I need a main event for uh, Christmas," and I'm like, "Man, I haven't been." By the time that fight comes, it's gonna be like close to two years, you know. And then, he, and he's like, oh, "I really need, I really need this main event." I'm like, oh. and then he's all, well, you know, Scott Smith, he's he's really tough, uh, you know, he has heavy, heavy hands, but you know, just you know, go back to your like, you know, uh, point fighting days. I'm like, point fighting? I, I only did point fighting for like a couple of events, and I got disqualified. He's all in there, you go in there, <laughs> point fight him, and here's a full, you know, you, you won't get disqualified, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, oh, man, uh, I said, you know, give me two weeks. Let me see how my body feels. And I, I went, I got to like, I jumped right into train camp and I was like, holy crap, you know, it's like, that, that, I was sore. And I was like, I don't know, man. And he got to, I already started promoting you, sorry. Oh. <laughs> so I just said, screw it. And we, we just went for it. And, uh, um, and uh, you know, I went in there and dominated. And when, when I was hitting him with the spinning back kick, he was like flying. Was, yeah, wow. Scott Smith like great flew into to, the cage, man. It, it's great to take some time off because you know I'm fully recovered and, mm-hmm. and uh, healthy and no injuries. And and then all of a sudden, uh, when he went down and I got on top of him and started punching, I was like, "Hey, ref, you know, stop it, you know, hey, I'm just punching, pull, you know, 
this guy is, I must have hit him like 50 times. And all of a sudden, as as he climbed his way back up, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so tired now. Right? Uh-huh. All of a sudden, because, yeah, I, I think I just gassed myself out because mm-hmm. it was like a, like a rush. And, you know, it's been like almost two years. And, and then I, I, I didn't really pace myself. So I just started throwing more kicks, dominated, um, um, dominated the second round. And going into the third round, I was dominating there, too, until... I tried for a big takedown. I said, I'm going to do this big Sancho throw. I'm going to take him down, and I'm just going to hold him. And, you know, I figured two minutes, I, I, yeah, he, I, I, I didn't have a chance to think of myself. So what if I'm going to surf on him for two minutes? I'm so tired. Right? I picked him up, slammed him, and he, he hit the fence, and he climbed back up. I was like, oh, my God. So I was going to dip down and shoot, and I dipped down, and my legs were tired. And I didn't get a chance to shoot, and I dipped right down, right into his little hook. And I was like, oh, I was so, like, Felt like I was break dancing across the, the, the you know, uh, the ring, and he just chased me down, and I, I, I hit the ground, I popped back up, and I was like, you know, me, you gotta like carry me out on, on a stretcher. Like I kept going, I stood back up to try to, you know, wave the storm and maybe get some kind of takedown, and and they say I know the referee stopped it because he was punching me, and I was on my fours. You know? mm-hmm. So it is what it is. It happened, and I got my revenge. Exactly. And for the revenge fight, how did you train? Did you have more than two weeks to prepare, I assume? Yeah. Um, right after that, I said, I'm not doing any films. I'm just going to train. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, because um, I also broke my nose on that fight. Oh. And, um, you know, like, I was, um, as soon as I hit the ground, I was, like, reaching for something, and he came underneath and threw that uppercut underneath, mm-hmm. started punching, and then uh, it just caught, like, perfectly at an angle, and I was like, gosh, I heard it. And I was like, oh, well, uh, you know, let's just uh, try to finish this out. And then the referee stopped it. So, you know, um, you know, I, it, was, it is like it, it just happened. So I just said, okay, you know, if you, if, 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 when you're winning, you're winning like a champion. When you train, you got to train like a champion. And if you lose, you got to lose like a champion. Mm-hmm. So let's just, uh, you know, suck it up. You're the first loss, you know. Um, don't get emotional. Exactly. And, uh, so uh, I just... All right, I held it in and um, got emotional at home. Uh, woke up the next day and was like, "Holy shit, I just lost! What a long run!" But you know, I, I'm gonna get back in the gym. And literally, like, uh, I was already back in the gym like two days later, and then, wow. then I had surgery. And um, you know, they said, "Oh, you have to take some this much time off." I was like, "I'm gonna train through it." So I just started training, and then for like, like probably like five months, I kept on saying, "When? When's my fight? When's my fight? When's my fight?" And then, uh, then finally they set it up. I was like, I'm gonna walk through this guy. And uh, first round, like you know, I, you know, of course he shot in and tied me up a little bit. And then uh, I was like, ah, just let me loose, just break out of this, you know, the stand, this trade, this throw down. And and then finally in the second round, he, you know, he didn't uh, try to push me on the fence, and I started opening up the hands, the knees, and then then that spinning back kick got through, and it was like, uh, good night. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, I think a lot of people wonder this too. Um, back when you did Sancho, you had that really cool scissor takedown, like Santa yeah. scissor takedown. Why did you not use it in MMA once you transitioned into Strike Force and um, UFC? Well, um, I used to do it like in practice, right? But mm-hmm. like, so every time I got, every time I got it in practice, I either had someone's foot and like you can foot lock, right? But at the same time, they have your 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 foot, but at the same time, you put yourself in a knee bar position. Oh. So, you know, a couple times I scissor kick someone, I'm like, ha, 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 and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm fighting off a knee bar mm-hmm. or fighting off an ankle lock. So I just felt like, you know, sure, I can scissor kick, but then it would look really bad or, you know, look really cool at first. I got basically me getting the scissor kick and then, uh, and fighting up, fighting off a knee bar and getting tapped with a, a you know a knee bar that would be really bad. And so I just uh, felt like uh, you know maybe I sh- shouldn't throw it. You know mm-hmm. I, I take a lot of risk in in the Sancho and the kickboxing because they'll just stand us back exactly. up. Exactly. In MMA, you're stuck on the ground and and then uh, you're fighting off submissions. So I just didn't want to. I, I wanted a higher percentage of, to to win already with my crazy style mm-hmm. and. You know, and then, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but throwing those kicks and those spin kicks and the head kicks, you know, it, it takes a lot from the, it takes a lot out of the gas tank. When you decided to go into the MMA, was it kind of a choice that you had for a long time, like a decision you were pondering for a while, or did you just 
at the spur of the moment decide, okay, that's my natural next step? Um, I think it, uh, after uh, like a like a long run in, in the in the stand up, in the full contact, you know, I, I had a really good, you know, Sancho career. I, I beat the best Chinese fighter at the time, and then I, I try to fight the best Chinese fighter, uh, Lu Hai Lu Hai Lung. And Ivan went over there, and uh, one of my buddies uh, from Brazil, who was like a, a bronze medalist at the World Championships, uh, ended up fighting him, but lost to him in points. And I just saw all kinds of like, oh, I see all kinds of like his his uh, like the Chinese fighters, uh, they're they're really good at scoring points mm-hmm. and they're really just catching your kicks and taking it down. And but I have that really solid wrestling background, and um, and me uh, uh, pressure fight, you know, just stay in the face and pressure, pressure, pressure. And uh, don't give them room to breathe, and, and that's what I did against uh, the Mongolian king in Hawaii. As I, I knew that uh, you know I was going to get caught with some st- uh, straight lefts, and mm. and then uh, you know if I um, threw lazy kicks, he would catch them, and so I just pressured him and just always put some kind of hands or some kind of kicks on him, and we're tied up. I'm kicking at his shins, and I, I just broke him. By the time the third round came around, that his corners like. They, they threw in the towel, so I, I, I figure, you know, that's the way I'm going to fight, uh, like, the Lu Hai Lung, because we're not fighting on the Lea Thai. Mm-hmm. We would fight boxing, and so that's kind of like, okay, pressure him, but on Lea Thai, you know, he's going to stick and move, stick and move, so now i got to play the same game with, uh, you know, with the side kick and catching the kick and fake kick, because, you know, you get pushed off, you lose three points off the Lea Thai. Uh... Right? Um, so I knew, you know, so I, I went to China, and I said, hey, let's fight, let's do this. And then I said, I'll, I'll come here and fight. And then there, there's actually, I think, a video or or like an article out there. And, and, and he basically, they turned down the fight. So, you know, I figure, okay, that's their best. Um, what else am I going to do? And then all of a sudden, Scott's all, you know, hey, I'm going to pro MMA. It's going to be the biggest uh, event in, uh, in San Jose. And it ended up being the biggest event for uh, uh, North America. 18,000 uh, people, you know, like, and then back then, you know, in strike force, like the fighters had to sell their own tickets to make a little bit of extra commission. Like they couldn't keep the tickets at, at my gym. I, I sold out. I think I sold over a couple, like a couple hundred thousand tickets. I mean, worth like dollars worth of tickets, but they never had enough for me. I could have sold more, but wow. like, yeah, it was just you know that place was completely packed out and it was sold out. And you know, um, it was uh, my uh, my intro to uh, MMA. Yeah. And were there any, um, because 2006, I was still in high school, so I actually didn't know about MMA in 2006, but at the time when you entered Strike Force, were there any commentators who were like, oh my god, Kung Lee's Kung Fu would never work in the ring? Were there any doubts like that? I'm sure there was always doubts, but you know, like, I'm one one of those guys that I, I try to stay off the, the internet mm-hmm. back then didn't have as much social media as now, you know? Mm-hmm. I think when I first got on social media, it was more like, UFC like, hey, start your Twitter, start your Instagram. I was like, ah, oh, really? And then, okay. So I had to start it, and then they're like, you know, we're going to give out like a $5,000 in three different categories, uh, whoever has the most followers in one quarter, and whoever is more creative. And I was like, okay, whatever. And, and then, you know, I, I had a couple good sponsors. I'm like, hey, uh, I'm just going to tweet. Get your shirt out there, but you have to ship it to, you know, whoever – you know, wins the shirt, and they're like, no problems. So I just got on and just started doing a couple. Hey, uh, who's gonna win? If you call all the fights right on this UFC, I'm, I'm, I, you get a signed T-shirt, right? And next thing I know, like my my fan base was growing, and then a lot of people remembered me from like the Frank Shamrock fight, and um, and uh, they, they I, I got like two bonuses like back to back. It was like ten grand. I'm like, oh my god. Next thing now, I'm like always on social media, but. You know, it's a uh, and it's 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 a big thing now for like marketing, right? Um, at, at one point, uh, like after you know, uh, I think um, after my last loss, I was just like, I'm not even tripping on social media. But then now the film industry is like, you know, the more followers you got, the better chances that you got the more roles and stuff like that. So you know, so I just started getting back and get more involved with the fans and and uh, you know and realize that hey, you know. Um, it's a good thing to be in touch with the fans because they're the one who has helped you get to where you're at because yeah. of the court and 
and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and it just you gotta block out those uh, those trolls and those uh, internet keyboard uh, um, grandmasters. You know, I I don't get the little keyboard warriors. I got the grandmasters. <laughs> I will defeat you in, you know, 12 styles. Of, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, awesome. You know, so. Have you yeah. ever walked down the street and some person, like, tried to challenge you or any, like, really dumb stuff like that happened? No, no, no. Uh, that has never happened. But, you know, the funniest thing is, like, you know, I, I got some great fans. But, you know, it's, it's like, hey, I'm, I, I don't think I look, like, intimidating or anything. I'm just, like, an Asian dude that's, like, Hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, I'm. I feel like I'm pretty outgoing, and um, and then uh, a lot of times it's like these girls come up to me and they're like, "Hi, sir, are you Mr. Lee?" I'm like, "Yes, I am." Uh, my boyfriend would really like to have a picture with me. Sure, no problem. How come he doesn't ask me himself? Well, oh, he's like, you know, he's scared. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's not good, you know, for for him, you know. So, you know, um, so those are the the weird things that would happen, but no one really like challenging and you know there is that one guy from uh, from canada from the win chung school that's going around bullying all the smaller masters right and so i said something and then of course you know it got blown out of proportion and i told him hey you're gonna go pick on someone pick on me if you want to you want to build your name you know i'm the guy to do it you know then then when it got serious and he like started talking i'll fight to the death and i'm like hey okay well you come from canada Obviously, Vietnam's not going to allow this to happen. Mm -hmm. We can't even sanction this. You want no rules? Okay, come. I, my, I have dozens of friends with private property. Just get on their land, go in their gates, close the gate. Let's, let's see who, who comes. Exactly. Out. Go to one of those mutual combat law states, and then, yeah, just duke it out. Yeah. So, but then, you know, um, obviously, you know when the guy's, a, a, you know, a, you know, basically just doing it for the for the name he'll he'll build it up as much as he could and all of a sudden get off the radar yeah 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 but you know it's it's cool it's just you know those those you know it, if you don't stand up for the people that are getting bullied then you know what's the use of you know learning martial arts you gotta be able to you know entertain people for in the competition but when it's time to use it in the right way to stand up to bullies especially bullying in the martial arts like industry mm -hmm. right they're gonna go to a Wing Chun con convention and and challenge like all the masters that are like past 60 years old and you're like you know 30 years old and 240 pounds and everyone's like uh, you know a buck 40 yeah exactly <laughs> all these Asian guys all old you know you know t being helped by their students you know it's like come on I'll, I'll fight you then. Fine. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Did did um the martial arts community reach out to you when Xu Xiaodong started trending when he was like fighting all the kung fu masters? Um, I actually um, I I I, I put um, I, I got a buddy Al Capone. I think uh, you talked to him. Mm -hmm. I call him Al Capone because like his 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 uh his handle is Al Capone, but his real name's Al. Mm -hmm. uh, Austin awesome mm -hmm. guy. Uh, he's been um working my social media for like two years now, two, three years. And, and, uh, you know, I'm like, Hey, um, if you could just post, I'm your Huckleberry. Right. And he's like, Oh, that's a great line. So as soon as I posted it, like I'm your Huckleberry, like, like 90% of the people are like, yay, you know, like, Hey, this guy's beating up the masters. But of course there's a lot of fake masters out there saying that they, they can, you know, internally, you know, do stuff and, you know, do, you know, they, they give more shorts a bad name, but yeah. you know, if you're gonna go and challenge someone, don't go and challenge them and say, "I challenge all the, you know, all the styles or whatever the style or kung fu." Just say, "Hey, I am directly challenging this person because they, I feel like they're a fraud." Okay, mm -hmm. then, then, but you, if you're gonna say, "I challenge all of kung fu or whatever," hey, you know, come through me then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, do your kids um follow in your path? Are they training in martial arts too? Yeah, all my kids do martial arts. I, I, I teach them, and, um, you know, they're all natural and, and little animals. So, you know, um, yeah. yeah. And what is their favorite? Do they like the striking stuff? Do they like the grappling? What do they like? Uh, the funny thing is, like, they're all a little bit uh, different, like, right? My youngest is just naturally um, talented, so he, I haven't really pushed him to completely trained hard yet and my oldest was good with kicks 
and uh, you know, decent with hands. Not he didn't want to wrestle, but my my uh, my middle son's uh, like uh, started wrestling last year, just like like one like one and undefeated for uh, Frost or like uh, junior varsity. Wow. And ended up, uh, uh, they moved him up to varsity, and he ended up winning uh, uh, city championships. And you know, then he he ran into like the returning champions, and you know, he didn't get beat bad. He, he lost by real close points. Wow. Like, overtime matches you know and uh, so we'll see how he does in eighth grade and uh you know um i i i don't want to be like that father right you know and make him you know, <laughs> burn him out and he, i never want to do wrestling again yeah yeah wow yeah. that was pretty cool one of my audience members wanted me to pass this question along to you so was it true that you were supposed to have a fight scene with john claude van damme that never happened Oh no, I did. You gotta watch Dragon Eyes. So it did happen then. Yeah, yeah. So um, mm. yeah, it, like, like the funny thing is, you know, um, in 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 the film, he he became my mentor, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, in the beginning, he's like just, you know, like he's a mentor. So he's, I come in, I I didn't know much about martial arts, and he used to like whoop my ass, and you know, like we we let the contact go a little bit more than than a regular actor would allow it, mm-hmm. right? So. I, I love the contact with and all of a sudden, you know, he was throwing some hard stuff and, you know, and uh, as soon as it was my turn when as like the, you show the progression. Right. And then I was like, all right, my turn to, you know, get, get you know, get some in. And then, um, and then, um, hold on. This is my son trying to get in. Oh, yeah. hi. Hi. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> so, um, so, you know, um, basically he's like, oh, you know, uh, I'm a little tired. My hip hurts, and so we just brought in uh, my uh, my uh, my training. My actually, my uh, Scott Sheely, and he, he I fought him twice, and he ended up being like you know my uh, uh, MMA coach along with Javier Mendez and all that. So you know we just peppered up his hair and uh, you know uh, shaved it up a little bit and had him come in and you know worked the the opposite angle, so it looked like I fought, you know, John Claude Van Damme. So. Camera magic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I see. You know, if you haven't seen Dragon Eyes, check it out. I think uh, uh, it, it was uh, yeah, it was my first time I got a chance to put all the fight scenes together myself. And then um, yeah, at the Action Film Fest in 2008 or before it was 2009, I can't remember what year. It's so long ago. Um, but uh, um, it, it was uh, competing against uh, Gino Carano's uh, uh, fight with uh, – uh, Michael Fassbender, mm-hmm. and uh, then uh, JJ Perry was the uh, the fight coordinator of that, and then JJ Perry ended up, of course, you know, winning uh, best fight coordinator for that uh, action film fest, and then uh, um, you know, I was like, oh yeah, okay, well, who you know, who who who's gonna, who uh, you know, I, I wonder what place I'm gonna end up, right? So and they're like, in third place, you know, because this is where like the, the one thing about like Chuck Norris is the one who. Who put it together this film festival, and then he he, he he didn't want no judges, so he let the the uh, the critics vote, right? Mm. And then ended up uh, in third place. You know the Michael uh, the Gina Carano and Michael Fassman. I was like, they came in third, but I I knew I, I knew the raid wasn't because I already had watched the raid. I'm like, well, the raid's gonna be for next year, so they're out of the race. I wonder who you know in second place. You know Kung Lee's warehouse scene. I'm like, oh yeah, Dragon Eyes, yes, yes. And in first place, Kung Lee Street Fighting Scene. Oh. So I won first and second, and you know, I, I felt like, yeah. And then, uh, you know, ever since then, I realized, you know, um, maybe it'd be better if I produce my own films and have control of my own action. And so this, this now is the chance to do that. I, I'm starting to finally, uh, you know, get the investors, you know, like you know, behind me and, mm-hmm. and then, uh, right. I figure, um, I figure when I was 40, I said, okay, you know, there's Donnie Yen out there. There's Jackie Chan out there. There's Jet Li. Mm-hmm. Those guys are, they're so iconic already. And, and of course, Bruce Lee, uh, you know, the great Bruce Lee. Um, but you know, how would I be different? How can I make myself stand out? Where can I, you know, make that, you know, bridge that gap. Right. And I say, well, if I stay in Hollywood, stereotype um that gangster that triad that um that guy who gets beat up by my buddy channing tatum (laughs) so um so i said okay i need to learn how to make a movie Mm -hmm. how to produce a movie how to fight coordinate 
how to uh, put a fight together, how to shoot guns like the proper way, the tactical way, um, how to move, how to you know work with the best angles, but at the same time make it as real as possible. So, and you know maybe even if I had to direct my own scenes because I stylize it like you know like if I see something cool with one car why how would I make it better you know then I figure I better just start learning so for the last since I was 40 I just started picking uh, minds I every time every time I got on set with one car why and every time I was done with my scene he's like go rest go rest I'm like can I sit, sit here and you know he's like why I'm like I'm gonna study you and the next thing I know he's like ask me questions at lunch right I'm, I'm like okay uh, what do you expect from an actor performance i'm like oh that's not okay so you know i got a chance to learn and and uh, you know figure yeah how to do it all myself so when the time comes i can do it and that's what i'm here i got a chance to you know write and also write scripts you know because you know i had some friends they write some scripts one guy got really big james Coyne, and he's all well you know that script that i wrote for you you're not the you know pay me my fees and I'm like, oh, great. But, <laughs> right, so I, I just figure I'm, I'm going to do it myself and, and then, uh, you know, uh, how I, I'm going to look for the topics that people want to watch the most is like, hey, I'm going to go on the internet, I'll ask some questions to the fans because they're the one watching it. Mm-hmm. Then what's, what's like really like treading big time on, on like YouTube or what's like the big topic out there, right? Of course, you know, like end of the world stuff, you know, uh, global warming and then or uh, UFO encounters or abduction and how this cow will get have a hold of it you know and so I started coming up with some ideas and putting it all together and you know and then uh, you know the zombie topic came up and then you know no one's really like made that that like like action martial arts horror or scary movie where you had a badass dude who you know, get his his ass whooped, but he gets away from that creature. Yeah, and he can whip the mass, and if his superiors like you know tries to uh, you know no, don't kill the creature. You know, he can kick his ass too. You know, but you know, um, and then then I realize, look what they're doing with like the Punisher. You know, he's always getting whooped up, and every show is he gonna be is he gonna live through this show? You know, so I think just building the character that is as real, and if something. Uh, would blow up behind you. You're not walking like I'm oh, cool. That didn't phase me at all, you know. So, so that's that's what I've been putting together. I, I feel like you know this movie, The Target. Um, I based it after true events about uh, two Vietnamese agent. Me, everyone will be following my journey mm-hmm. as as this uh, agent and um, and uh, you know how how instead of just making a, a Vietnam film, but how to make it an international film by mm-hmm. bringing in the English intelligence and uh, the American lifestyle and, you know, uh, where, like, my father was going to be the, the youngest general and um, he ended up dying because he was sent on a secret mission. And, um, you know, I as I grew up, um, my mom took me to, to America, you know, kind of like that uh, thing, but then I can't, I go back after high school and then, uh, you know, um, basically join the military and become one of the best, um, you know, um, you know, modern day warriors in Vietnam. So I get recruited by the intelligence, and now I'm just going after the guys who like embezzle money from Vietnam, or you know, the criminals that's smuggling drugs in, and then get end up uh, end up uh, have a price tag on my head uh, because uh, the I capture the the son of a syndicate boss. And who decides to kill himself because you know he doesn't want to serve life in prison. So, um, you know, then I become the target mm-hmm. along with my partner, and, and I, you know, got some comedic, some comedic breaks in there, and you know, just trying to keep it as real as possible. Wow. Well, you know? One of the people in in the movie is part of Jackie Chan's stunt team, right? Yes, yes. Uh, v Don, and then uh, actually Andrew Long. Um, you know, um, I definitely, uh, I'm also in, in talks with uh, like a. With Daniel Wu, I figure you know, oh, hey, um, you know, you know, Daniel's uh, s- such a he's done so much, but you know, um, he's got a buddy Wu Jing, and all of a sudden Wu Jing does this movie uh, called Wolf Warrior, mm-hmm. and to me, because I hang out with a lot of military guys, that like everything tactically is wrong about that movie, <laughs> <laughs> and then part 
too was um you know it just added more body counts and some tanks and airplanes and um you know you know it's it's uh it's almost like a like a modern day commando yeah exactly <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger's commando where even the tank gets blown up and he's flying out and uh you know it's um so I figure, wow, man, they're a little bit behind the curve, making some like realistic movie. And you know, who is like the Asian James Bond, right? I'm like, hey, you know what? Danny Wu should be the Asian James Bond because he looks good in a suit. He's a model, and I, I'm I'm that Asian uh, Jason Bourne, you know. And what if we had James Bond and Jason Bourne team up? That would be like some double ass kicking going on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think the movie potentially could spin off uh, uh you know uh, two characters that kick a lot of ass so we'll see what happens wow for your part in into the badlands did you choreograph your own fights or did someone else choreograph it for you no i'll never take credit for uh you know any anything that I, i've never done mm -hmm. uh, whether it's bad or good mm -hmm. right so um uh master dd and um um uh, uh, Steve uh, uh, Stephen uh, Stephen Fong uh, was the second unit director, and so I got a chance to work with Master Didi, who was like a, uh, I guess the right hand man of Master Wu Ping uh, coming up. So I was blessed to work with that team. You know, um, you know, like Dan Dan was a, such a cool character. Like after um, my, uh, you know, after I stopped fighting, I was like, oh man, you know, with all the crazy press that was going on with what the UFC was trying to do with me, mm -hmm. trying to get in the bus and stuff like that. And uh, then they had to take back everything that they accused me of. Um, so I was, it was some some rough times, you know, like yeah. like my phone was like dead for like six months. Wow. Like, so I was like, hey, Daniel, yeah, you know, help an Asian brother out, right? And mm -hmm. then he's like, I got something for you, but it's not there yet. And I'm like, okay. And I figure, ah, oh, you know, it's just the industry. It's people, if, you, if you're an actor in Hollywood, you, you'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll help yeah, you. you never say no. You always say, yes, I'll get back yeah. to you. And then all of a sudden, Daniel called me up one day. You ready to come out? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I need you out next week. I'm like, sure. Wow. I'm, I'm out there. And boom, I, I get into, um, you know, the, the finale episode. And they end up keep, keeping me alive for season two. And, you know, I'm grateful for, for that. And actually, I got him a six-figure sponsorship wow. in, in season in season two with Garden of Life. So, you know, I think it's a give-give a, a relationship, you know. Um, so, you know, I think uh, uh, knowing Daniel for so long, he – uh, a long time ago, I used to teach at the National Wushu Training Center, uh, mm -hmm. the fighting part, and he would come in, take a couple classes, you know, that real tough guy, like, wanted to, you know, taste leather and spar and do some crazy stuff. So, you know, I got a lot of respect for the guy, and, and we became, you know, real good friends. Now he runs around, and once in a while, we, sh we go tactical on, you know, we team up some work with some SEALs and, you know, wow. go, go run and gun. Wow. And is um, Evoke one of the products that sponsors you? Is that one of the um, things that um, you guys do too? Yeah, you know, um, Evoke Tactical, uh, Bay Area Tactical, they're all in one company. You know, they're, um, they have amazing uh, products like, you know, uh, knife-resistant bags with uh, solar panels. Uh, they, they just make cutting-edge stuff. And mm -hmm. um, Bat Tactical, they, they got some Navy SEALs that, you know, teach uh, shooting courses and, uh, you know, I've, I've become pretty good friends with those guys, and um, you know, we're always just uh, trying to figure out how to take it to the next level. And, and they, they, you know, they they got this uh, high level in steel guy. I'll be announcing that soon. I don't want to drop drop his name until he's really there. Right? Okay. But you know, he's a guy who created low light, and you know, teaches uh, how to clear a house by yourself. Wow. You know, so um, I'm excited to work with him, especially that you know um for the last three years i've been focusing on you know tactical and um, different types of fighting that will be uh you know pleasing to the eye and the cutting edge you know you got you know yeah you know, my agent now got every single asian in in his in their crew right so I, I'm like, <laughs> I gotta compete with all this guy eco from the raid you know and all, all these animals that are you know um that are yeah, that are great martial artists, but I'm still the biggest Asian, and um, and uh, I'm the only one who really fights. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you uh, have you've invested all this time learning the tactical parts. It's like it's yeah. it's really cool to to like know that you've done so much research and been involved with so much of that. Yeah, yeah. So 
that you know that's uh, basically kind of like my journey right now so mm -hmm. now that i get a chance uh you know just uh working with some uh, investors in vietnam and the you know the maybe the person who's gonna be part of the film too is you know it's kind of you know a little bit different but you know uh slowly but surely i'm gonna help take vietnam's film industry to another level and put them on the map like you know eco did with uh you know um uh, you know with this country yeah so. exactly yeah. exactly I'm, I'm, I'm bigger i'm physical mm -hmm. and i can i'm athletic and i can handle a gun you know from uh you know i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna make some all the guys who work with me who's uh, you know uh, veterans, uh, I want to make them proud, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, they spend the time with me and, you know, I definitely want to represent, uh, you know, what what they do and what they are and, and how they serve, you know, to the best of my abilities, so we'll see what happens and the, the story I got behind um, all the characters that I that, that, that I, I plan to do is uh, you know, I just, I base it on certain, uh, well, a couple different people and, and then uh, I make it my, my own and if I was in that situation, what would my character do? Mm -hmm. What would he as a person do? You know, so see uh, see what happens. Yeah. Let's say a few movies down the line, do you think you'll stick to action or will you maybe branch out into other things? Maybe like more comedy, more horror? Yeah. Or... You know, I'm, I'm not like a rom-com kind of guy. Uh -huh. I need action. I need things to blow up. I need, you know, um, to put shin bone on people and, <laughs> and pick guys up. You know, I want to do it as long as I could, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe um, change change pace and do something different. You know, but right now, I think until I I can't think that far ahead, right? If I think too far ahead, then um, then then you know, uh, then I'm getting off the path. Yeah. Like, I, like I, I want to stay humble. I want to stay focused, and uh, you know, I want to uh, be true to to the characters that I'm I'm playing and um, and entertain mm -hmm. and and just make people. Um, uh, fall in love with the character and follow the character's journey and if the character's like you know having his cliffhanger moment the pe I want the audience to be on the edge of their seat along with me you know so that's that's I think that's key for me and then uh, when, when when the opportunity comes up then you know I'm one of those guys that the way I train you know I'm, I'm the first one in the last to leave um uh, you know, there's uh, there's only a handful of people that have my kind of work ethics, or or I can say I have their kind of work ethics. You know, I'm not trying to compare, but you know, it's really it's really out it's really hard to outwork me. Mm -hmm. You know, even now I'm I'm training with the younger guys, and when I'm you know doing my rounds, I'm like, hey, let's do one more, and they're the, they're the one laying on the ground, you know, so. <laughs> Okay, so now we're hanging out in my little workout area. Oh, nice. Uh, as you see, it's a, it's a lot like cardio, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, because, uh, you know, like with weights, uh, if you don't have the weights, you can always do the body weight. You know, I, I do a lot of, like, crazy push-ups and, and uh, upside-down push-ups and stuff like that. But uh, um, um, the question you were about to ask me is oh yeah the the ufc the kind of the class action lawsuit that you guys filed against them has that been resolved or is that still ongoing so the the class action you know what i can say about it is class action usually takes years and years and years right but i think we're in a really good spot and as you can see as time uh since when i first joined on um uh, you you see that we have we have for the Muhammad Ali Act I believe there was um, 16 Congress that signed the bill and that got approved mm -hmm. we got over 60 you know so it's just a matter of time and um, as you know it's uh, it's uh, I think fighters are starting to see it now uh, that that these uh, the well I'm I don't want to drop any names but everyone knows who I'm talking about mm -hmm. uh, as the promotion uh, continues uh, in boxing it's like a 50-50 split you know a lot of times the boxers are making more than, than the promoters and the, the promoters doing um, you know their share of work uh, but the, uh, without the boxers there's no boxing event 
Mm -hmm. without the matchups. There's no, there's no, there's no matchups. And it's, it's the same for MMA. And if there's no fighters, there's no UFC, there's no Bellator. And, you know, I, I, I could honestly say one thing about, um, you know, like Bellator. Sure. They're just sticking to the same contract as the industry, as everyone else. Um, but if they're, if they had pay-per-view, they'd be paying their fighters a lot more. Mm -hmm. And what they're paying their fighters now is like two, uh, you know, they're, like some fighters are getting paid 200 times more than, than, than what uh, a UFC fighter would be getting wow. because in, while UFC, while UFC they have pay per view and you know whatever they make at the gate, but the fighters making a fraction of what they're actually making, right? So um, only some some of the big names, but what one or two, three at most are making any serious money mm -hmm. uh, you only have really one one name out there connor right he's making the big money but even then is he really getting paid what he's worth you know i know a lot of people can bag on him but he draws the fact that he can draw that that's big you should pay him mm -hmm. and he's worth all that money because he draws and uh you know and uh, you know i i don't know what um could you know um could be pay is but you know, look at his draw in mm -hmm. Russia, and you know I'm sure he's not making, you know, you know, nearly as much as what Conor makes for a, a UFC fight. That's just because, you know, the fighters are suppressed now. Like mm -hmm. even now, recently, uh, you know, um, who who is it saying, um, saying that you know the, the fighters don't make enough? There's a main event this weekend. Um, yeah, uh, it's just a. Uh, Blocking my mind. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Um, Eddie Alvarez. Mm -hmm. you know, fighters don't make enough. They don't get paid enough. And if you look at it, you know, if you look at the pay, right? Um, someone in the main event, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, his, his opponent, uh, Dustin, uh, I can't remember his last name, but he, was, he made 55 to show, 55 to win. Mm-hmm. I mean that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, that is pretty event. ridiculous. But it's the main event. Yeah, sure they get a fifty thousand dollar bonus and and you know like people who make thirty thousand a year or forty thousand a year, they're saying, oh wow, yeah, they, look how much they made. It's, well, hello, uh, you know you're getting you know eight weeks or six to eight weeks of you know um, grind and uh, blood and sweat and 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 you know you're the one tuning in and you're the one paying fifty nine dollars and. In that fifty-nine dollars, not even two dollars of that pay-per-view is going in their pocket. Wow, is that right? I don't think so. So you know, that's why I figure after what happened to me, I said I'm going to stand up for all the fighters, and uh, you know, um, that that was a decision me and my wife made together, and uh, it was a very calculated decision at the same time. Um, and um, when they accused me of, you know, you know, the the HGH, it's like really uh if if you thank god dr caitlin who's the olympic committee uh uh specialist came on and said um uh, after if you work out right after you work out your levels are going to be this much and it happened to be they took my blood not even 30 minutes they took my blood 15 minutes right after wow. and the levels were exactly what he said it would be right so uh, with hgh and why why would I take HH for it's not it doesn't bring any performance I would be taking other stuff like anabolic and uh, yeah sure I look great for my last fight but I, I got a year and even my trainer Matt Allen he's like a, a physique specialist you know he and he's he's a nutritionist a, a, like a dietitian he says for me to take a whole year to look like that I I was like a, a disappointment uh for what he's done because <laughs> all these people are, are doing that in three to four months and i was like okay i have a sweet tooth okay i like pizza and he's all that's what i mean and and he's all if if i was training you and you were on that you would be like a lot bigger wow so i was like super lean and i was still smaller than michael i was just super ripped mm -hmm. and, and if, if you go back and you look at that picture that was like viral right yeah. it just happened to that i just got done finished the weather in Vietnam is like humid. My veins are popping out, but I also, 
I, I had the apps, I had the enhancements, right? So it made me look like there's a shadow on me, and I, yeah. of course, veins are all popping out. But then, if how come seven days before, uh, yeah, no, not even seven, like four or five days before that, I did the ice bucket challenge. And so you saw me without my shirt. I was cut, but I didn't look like that. So it was the picture enhancement. So they blew it out of uh, proportion. And the biggest thing is, before I was supposed to go out there, I was supposed to re-sign an 18-month contract, six-fight deal, and I didn't. And all I said was, my lawyer's not here, so I'm not going to sign it. Yeah, good for you, good for you. And then their lawyers are like, oh, you know what's best, you need to sign that, and you need to have that back to me um, before you leave. I'm like, what? You know, like, no. My lawyer's got to read it. All right, suit yourself. And that, that was like the first time, like, I've done all this for the UFC and you're going to talk to me like that. I felt like climbing through that phone and like, you know, like slapping them, like all those guys, you know. And, um, but, you know, it is what it is. And, um, you know, at one point I was the company company man. I showed up and, you know, uh, six weeks before uh, the, the, the Rich Franklin fight, I had elbow surgery and then, and then uh, uh, you know, my foot was messed up and I still fought for them because they're like, hey, that we need you to do some stuff. I'm like, like, hey, I just got done kicking someone, Patrick Cote in the head, and I, I, I thought I broke my foot, but it was a bone bruise, and I, I only have, what, eight weeks to get ready for Rich Franklin, you know, the former UFC champion. That's, that's going to be a, a tough one, and I need my right kick, right? And then they're like, well, you know what you have to do. I'm like, what do I have to do? You need to go in your doctor and tell him to clear you. I said, oh. how am I supposed to do that? I, I don't have, like, you're Kung Lee. You're a superstar. You can get it done. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll let me try. So I figure out, you know what? I'm not going to go and say, hey, I'm Kung Lee, so you have to do this. He, the doctor, he's the Raiders doctor. He's going to go, he, he's going to go, he, he, he'll probably say, Kung, it's my license online. Go fuck off. You know, so I'm not going to, uh, excuse my Vietnamese, but I'm not going to go and do that. So I, I, I said, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take about three naproxen, some Tylenol, and let him crank my foot a little bit and, not gonna hurt at all because I have all the, all that meat. Shit, I should have took like a handful of naproxen because that what he was manipulating when it was done. He's like, "Come, why are you why are you sweating right now? Ah, oh, it's kind of hot in your office. You know, I have the air conditioning on. I'm like, and you know, he's all, what's wrong with your foot? Your hurts. He's all, so I can't bash you. And I said, uh, so I, how am I gonna put food on my table? How am I gonna pay my bills? He's okay. Well, um, you're you're clear. Um, you something happens. Uh, you know you uh, you heard it again. Not because you cleared now. Get it? I'm like, got it. Thank you so much. So that's the shit. You know, yeah, a fighter's got to do. Wow. Wow. Thanks for sharing these inside scoops, man. Like we would have never known. Yep. Yep. Nope. No. Nope. And that was the first time I shared it. I did share it. In, uh, deposition but that's uh that that's a true story and uh during deposition since i already said it and they have it on tape that's exactly what happened mm -hmm. and thank goodness the rich franklin fight ended so early you just knocked him out immediately thank goodness you yeah. know because i i was barely like like even um like a lot of people don't realize right i accepted the rich franklin fight two weeks later they're like come you're you're going to china i'm like i'm in camp and they're like you're going to china i'm like why am I going to China? Well, you're going to do some press for, for the fight, to promote the fight. We spent millions of dollars. You're going to be on every taxi, bus, billboards. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. So that's your promotion. Why do I have to go to China? I need to be in camp to train. This is Rich Franklin. And my foot's kind of still fucked up. Excuse, you know, excuse my Vietnamese again. Mm -hmm. they're like, you're going to China. I'm like, okay, I'm going to China. There's like when they tell you you're going to China or, or you're going to be like, you know, on the undercard or not in fight at all, you're, you're going to China. So I went to China and brought, I, I asked to bring my training, uh, Scott Shealy along. And at one point, I was like, I was having a hard time, like, you know, carrying my luggage because my elbow was bugging me. And then, uh, and then every city that we went to, we were doing an open workout. Mm -hmm. and like, make, you're the only one doing the open workout, make it good, right? I'm like, all right, so we'll hit some pads and we'll do some light sparring. You know, it's just uh, and a little accident. My trainer kicked me in the elbow, and then mm -hmm. like, oh, I what a weird stinger, right? And all of a sudden, that last day, that was after like the ten days of like 
like two like uh, press releases a day almost and um, you know there's so much Chinese media and then uh, I got on the plane I was so tired like I literally I got on the plane didn't shower or anything after the last open workout they rushed me to the airport barely got there and then uh, when I woke up I couldn't even straighten out my elbow wow. and then I went back and I was like oh my god what are you gonna do I'm like oh, I'm gonna go check it out and when they checked out they saw all kinds of floating bone spur and I was like oh. man, I, man my trainer's the one who kicked the bone spur out right so I was like all right so what can I do doc and, and he's all well oh I can scrape the the back but I can't go through the front because you won't be able to bend your you know you, you'll be it'll be really bad mm -hmm. okay scrape the, the back and don't mess with the front so he scraped the back I was able to straighten out my elbow and then for the next uh six weeks like literally i have like pictures of these crazy marbles in there right um i we, we just did a, so much film study every little every little calculation and i think it really helped out because i i would just went in there and i said okay let my skills take over mm -hmm. but actually when you study and you watch everyone's movement like every single day it's like watching film that's why you know, so so many you know football players that really study the other team. They already know when the the ball's getting thrown. It was almost like, okay, he's gonna kick me, and wow, I just saw his hands drop, just like the the, the footage I've seen. And even though you know the the range, you you can't, couldn't get in the range, and I threw it, and I'm like, wow, if that was basketball, that's like air ball. I just missed a hoop. I didn't even come close to the hoop. And the next one, I barely hit the rim. You know, I barely hit his forearm. Then I hit, I grazed his shoulder. I'm like, okay. Here it is. Don't catch his leg because I'm good at catching and kicking and sweeping him out. I said, all right, let's not, let's not, um, you know, take him down or he'll, you know, not do that. And he'll probably force me on the fence and probably, you know, stomp on my foot or something like that, right? Um, so I, I just uh, let him kick kick a couple more times on my leg. And then I, I figure, you know, um, as soon as I saw that kick come again, I already knew that I was going to touch him. And mm -hmm. so I just placed the punch right. And I was like, you know, good night. And I was like, thank God. That's why I was so happy. Cause yeah, you were you were celebrating. You, yeah, I think yeah. you jumped on the cage, right? You were so happy. Yeah. So um, it, it was great. And and then when I came back two days later, I had the surgery on the front of my elbow. Oh my God. So it's it, it's 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 that crazy ride, you know. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. And uh, it's a uh, you know it's it's a tough sport, and that's why like people say, did you want your son to do that? I'm like. Man, yeah. If if, if they if they don't get hurt, uh, sure, of course, I would love them to do it. But you know, I'm just gonna support them in whatever they do, and as long as they're not, you know, like robbing banks or something, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, Thanks for sharing that story. I don't think anyone knew that your elbow was basically broken when you fought Rich Franklin, and that the UFC basically forced you to be like, yeah, well, you got to do it anyways, and your toes fucked up, but you got to do it anyways. Yeah, yeah. It's like the foot and everything is it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So, are those injuries now fully healed, or they're like as healed as they can be? You know, um, they're 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 healed, but you still feel them. Yeah, right? exactly. Because unless you really give it time off to heal, then um, then uh, you can really get like most of it out. But I never did. Mm -hmm. I was like right back in there. You know, um, uh, I kicked a lot of air and I kicked a lot of paddle for paddles for the last week and I, I figure okay I have one shot if I kick him and I hit him in the face he's got to be out or my foot's going to be like throbbing exactly I said oh I got adrenaline but man uh you know I, I thought I had um enough naproxen in me to you know not feel the pain when the doctor was like moving it around and I was like holy crap you know and so um yeah that's that's kind of that's that's the journey of like uh it's as real as it, when they when their slogan is as real as it gets yep it yeah. sure is. wow yeah. wow and so i take it now i mean you know you, you got your awesome movie ideas and everything you're probably not gonna you're probably not gonna go back into fighting right it's like fighting you're done with that yeah you know and uh of course you know as a fighter and that you know, I can't speak for all the fighters, but it's, you always get that itch. You know, you're like, man, uh, just one more fight, you know, just for the hell of it, just for the fun of it, right? Yeah. The, the rush, the the feelings. and But then, then you know, I got 
these these new investors are like, you know, they're putting a lot of money behind you. And, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm going to go and fight and then I'll make the movie. <laughs> they might be like, go oh, get lost, you know, because you know, what happened was like, right, uh, the Michael Bisping, and I was like, okay, you know, what could, yeah, you know, he, if he beats me, he beats me. I'm going to go. And it's Bill Kong, you know, and I, I got a chance to, I, I thought I had a chance to work with Simon Hung, right? So we're going to do a movie like literally a week after um, I was done um, in, in Macau. But I'll see, it didn't work out. You know, mm. I cut my face pretty good. I broke an eye bone underneath my eyeball, you know, and um, um, I just fucked up my opportunity to go and work with Simon Hung and, you know, and it, it didn't work out. So I figure shit. Now, if I, you know, like even wanted to, you know, taste that wing and or get back in there, it's like all these people are like, okay, hey, if I'm going to invest in you, what are you going to offer me? So I can't for, offer you any injuries. Yeah. Then, you know, then, then my, my stocks go way down. So I think now that I, I've learned so much, I've educated myself where I could, you know, even direct and, and put the, a fight together. Of course, I couldn't shoot a whole movie by myself unless I had like tripods and I figure out they'd be like the longest process ever and um, but you know organizing a team learning every single little details about you know um, background and and uh, the details in each scene then then uh, if I can put it all together with a good team I think then I'll have a good movie yeah exactly exactly so um, besides the current movie you're working on do you have like three five twenty other scripts that you are also in your back burner? I got six other scripts in oh, my wow. back burner. Now. Yeah. Um, I figure, you know what? I got to do a slate of films. Because, you know, a long time ago when I was studying the market, I was, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, you know, internet, you know, I think the game's going to change. And, of course, the studios, they're like, you know, ah, no, never. We're always going to be on top. But then all of a sudden Netflix popped up. Yeah. Then Amazon Prime, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, you got like Crackle, you got even Facebook's getting into the mix now and YouTube Red, right? So um, before there was like a handful of media content that they, they would buy your content. Now there's over 180. Wow. You know, so it's like a wild, wild west. So the better your, the better your films are, the, you know, it's like you're playing, you're either playing in the NFL or you're playing in the, in you know, in the CFL, you know, <laughs> yeah. but, not even the CFL, you're like a practice squad, you know? So where's your movie going to be? The better you make your movies, the better chance you get to make it on the big leagues, you know, whether it makes it to like a, a big theater because you, right now I think Hollywood's busting all the big, like, you know, Infinity Wars and all the big ones in the theaters and, you know, the, all the all the little ones get lost. But, hey, look at, look at that movie, Get Out, <laughs> you know? Uh, some of those uh, four or five million dollar movie ones that are, you know, breaking two hundred million dollars, you know. So and look, look, you know, like Wolf Warrior. I mean, made for like six or eight, and then did eighty million. Then their second one, they did um, eight hundred million. That's that's some numbers right there. So I figure, you know, let's let's go small. Let's the, the, my my whole strategy behind this, and it's like okay. Sure, I would love one of those big ass five to ten or fifteen or twenty million dollar paycheck. But what if I took a mid-level actor's pay of four or five million dollars, and I was able to make a whole complete movie, pulling all my strings, all the people I know that says, "Hey, come use my restaurant. Here's my land. I have 300 acres. You can use. You can do whatever. Look how it looks. And here's my mansion. Just don't break anything. <laughs> um, I have all the these things that I'm gonna use it. You know that this movie is like. You know, uh, budgets you know, under five, mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm going to France, going to Vietnam, um, shooting in uh, the Bay Area and in Las Vegas. It's it's going to be a truly international movie. Wow! National martial arts spy thriller. Have you heard of that? Exactly. Nope. Yep. And tactically, um, uh, fight wise, you know, it's going to be as real as it gets. And the characters, one of those guys that. You know, he, he has that on and off switch, you know, like when it's go time, it's go time. But, you know, other than that, his mom, his his mom, who uh, is, you know, um, he still 
needs to take care of his mom and uh, because you know us Asians you know it's not like the Americans we, we, we are like they're there they're just they won't go away and we have to take care of them right we're not gonna go put them in a in in some uh, some home which you know I think they would have a lot more fun in there <laughs> than just yeah hey, I'm gonna work and don't burn anything or you know kill yourself because you're so bored at home right mm-hmm. um, so I, I figure um, that element and uh, married to my job and uh, with a hot partner that some crazy sexual tension going on and uh, some cool spy shit and some funny funny stuff going on I think it's gonna be a, a, a good good ride for someone to watch a movie with some like me driving someone through the wall or you know shooting a double leg using them as a battering and wow them, them souffleing them um, after you know they drop and they flip over and they're grabbing for their gun and grab them up off the floor and do this uh, a Greco-Roman move that I used to be really good at picking someone off the ground and souping them and hanging on to the souffle and doing it again <laughs> think people are like holy shit did you see that exactly yeah exactly there's so much room to incorporate more mma into action movies so i'm so excited to see where this goes yeah yeah it's it's gonna be good um it's gonna be like real Uh, i mean you know i i've I've got some really cool war stories from some of my friends and i'm definitely putting some of those elements and uh and uh, make it real Make it real and make it like funny because when you think about it, like you're not even tripping. You think you thought you got shot, but it's actually just a like a vase sticking out of your head because the, the round hit the vase and it, the the velocity of the vase flying to, to your head and sticking on your head and you're like, oh, thank God, it's not a bullet. Let me just rip the piece of vase out of my head, you know. So it's, it's gonna be good. Wow. So, for everyone watching on Fight Commentary Breakdowns, man, something to look forward to. You know, Kung's going to get this kick-ass movie out. Yep, The Target. Mm-hmm. Yep, The Target. So mm-hmm. That's and amazing. You're going to have a good twist at the end, too. Okay, even better. Even better. Twist mm-hmm. and, and, you, and definitely the characters, right? The, you're going to follow this character, and you're going to be like, I dig this character. And he's real, and, and uh, you know, he knows death is right there, and but like fuck it let's do this exactly exactly i think that's this is a good place to end it it's like something really cool to look forward to do you have any shout outs or any other people you want to plug or anything like that while we're at it um you know what to all the fans my friends my family my wife my kids uh god and um the world just thanks for having me Awesome. Everyone, this was Kung Lee, MMA legend, and now, you know, he's been in movies for a while, but he's, like, doing his own stuff. He's going to revolutionize the martial arts and movies. So thank you so much, Kung, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Awesome.